Gentlemen, there is no game that is more popular and that I understand less than Genshin Impact. This is Maxor's Genshin Impact review. My money is gone. Waifu Simulator. No way this isn't going to get weird. Let's get into it. Impact is a game which has sucked away my soul and killed my dog. I okay, wow, all right. Well, already he's not selling me on this. First began playing Genshin Impact because of all the cute women that experienced apotheosis and a philosophical... In you know, some people said that Maxor slowly became corrupted uh, by anime girls, but I'm going to say this is a man who was probably into anime girls long before the games reprogrammed his fragile mind. Enlightenment through the death of my own ego. I love Genshin Impact, but this game will have an impact on your social life, and even after you stop playing, you will not recover. To this day, it has left me in a perpetual state of sophisticated molding, and I recommend it for all the wrong reasons. It yeah, okay, guys, I'm gonna tell you that uh, if you are dating, I suspect, though again, I'm married, right? But if you're dating and a girl comes home and she sees this on your screen, guys, you're staying single. In this game, you play as John Impact, an extra-dimensional being whose brother was eaten by Mega Bloks and is forced to navigate Avatar The Last Airbender for Weeaboos. Powered by its simple chemistry system in which characters electrocute, burn, and throw rocks at each other, one of those is much less cool, but it, like Australopithecus, was my primary source of damage. Now trapped in the la yeah, you know, sometimes it's sort of like the barbarian characters in basically every hack and slash RPG. Yep, you can learn to some sort of optimized synergistic spell system or or big sword hurt more land of gotcha hell our protagonist must find a way to save our siblings by fighting geometry the indigenous inhabitants of twitter space midgets and the ice King. the indigenous inhabitants of twitter first off twitter is man-made so you can't really say that they have indigenous inhabitants if they do they'd be like creepy ais that like emerged from the the hateful soup uh unless you mean very 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 online twitter users in which case, you are doing the world a favor by purging them. KGB. As well, we are here to explore, solve puzzles, play prop hunt, cook, get arrested for looking at Zhang Ling too much, get sentenced to 10 years, and emerge from prison a devout Buddhist. This video is going to be about my experience playing this interesting <laughs> game and how to objectively ha Wait, we're only on the intro? Jesus, this has already been too much information for my tiny tiny mind have the most fun with it it's a very bad sign when most people who play the game don't recommend it but i do although i am slightly a dingus so i don't recommend you take my opinion as fact but as entertainment so whether you're new to this strange otherworldly chinese software or a genshin pro please allow me to tell you the tale of is genshin chinese I, okay so usually in my limited very limited knowledge uh the more dense and elaborate characters tend to be chinese so i'm gonna say this waifu similar this these may be chinese characters i don't know if that's the same thing as this game is chinese made i think of this style and these type of girls as being classically uh anime japanese uh originating but uh you know cultural exchange is the norm in the era of globalization. And so it's extremely common to see ideas get taken, co-opted, and their own spin put on it. Uh, this is actually, believe it or not, if you look in the history of almost any culinary dish you love, you will realize that it is not the original source of, the source material is, well, not really the source material. Uh, there's a bunch of like African flatbreads that are actually spins on Indian naan, uh, which I believe is actually a spin on Greek uh, flatbreads from the, you know, the, the BCs came over with Alexander, right? It, it, same with some uh, Italian pizza, for example, right? Not Italian. In fact, tomatoes didn't exist until... Uh, well, didn't exist in Europe until they were brought over from North America. So there's all this sort of stuff where you think you've got something locked in, but you don't. In fact, pepperoni, right, the preserved meat, doesn't really quite exist in Italy. If you order a pepperoni pizza, they will give you peppers on your pizza, which is not bad, but not usually what they want. Usually what you will get is... Uh, uh, like salsicha picante or, or like a spicy sausage. Of how this left a Genshin impact into my frontal lobe. 
Here's a fun tip that most Genshin players don't know. The age of consent is 18 years old. Oh. Jesus. It should be. It should be everywhere. And actually, guys, I know there's the classic weeb move of technically the age of consent, but, 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 right? You, you, you know, you're, you're not a, you know, the, the Discord mod argument or the Reddit mod argument. Uh, but, but actually, it's really kind of screwed up. Um, there's a lot of states where the minimum age to uh, get married is actually can be well, sometimes under, sometimes well under 18 years old um, with parental consent. Uh, which is sort of horrible to think about that parents can basically sign a, an unwilling child away uh, to be a spouse to someone who is not, you know, the child cannot consent, right? They're under 18, so their parents have to consent, but they're signing a marriage document. It's actually really messed up, um, and the fact that it's legal in some states is uh, trashy and horrific. Let's begin with what's maximally important. Not the gameplay, not the story, nor anything you would typically associate with a video game. The single most important thing in this game is rolling dice to gain attractive people and then parading them around like a child on TLC. I do not exaggerate when I say this is probably what attracted most people to this game. If you This is absolutely... Uh like even intense by max or standards one example lisa is a character who continually refers to herself as onesama and sounds like she is at all times on the verge of sex yeah. i received her after completing a quest and then decided that i would use lisa you know if you ever wonder why the stereotypical weeb views women's as objects it's because there's literally a sexy woman collector game uh in which they literally i assume have to follow your every command uh, this is probably fraught for a bunch of reasons. That's what I'm going to say. And I'm just, I'm actually just going to leave it at that. Exclusively to do rock climbing. That way I could repeatedly hear her oddly enthusiastic moaning for the next 10 hours of gameplay. I literally installed this game after downloading 60 images of Ganyu. Since the official lore of the game specifies that she killed a monster after being eaten by it because her ass was so big it blocked his trachea and suffocated him to death. However, there is a catch. I don't have Ganyu and I never will. You have a random chance to get characters and that chance isn't high. 5.1% to be exact. And that's getting anyone so if you want a particular character get fucked you could have your very first role be a high level dps character that carries you through the game with chimpanzee martial arts or you could roll three useless small boys in a row and then desire their death it's a fucking guy. God damn it. Fuck. And while I'm writing about bad things that could be deal breakers, the anti-cheat for this game is very strong and has ring zero permissions on your kernel. This means that it can read and write memory at any location in your computer without seg faulting. I, however, am not afraid since if Xi Jinping does harvest my computer's data, all he will find is 50 pages of Waluigi Hentai. It's yeah, guys, it, it, I think this is actually probably true. And this should worry you considerably is the potency of backdoor malware. And oftentimes with these sort of things, it's tough to know, right, if how this sort of malware permission works. This sometimes they call them backdoors or, or day zero vulnerabilities. I, I'm it, the truth is I'm not a super in depth cybersecurity guy. But what something like this could do is once it has permissions, all it would take is another software update. Uh, to install the actual malware, the actual spyware, the actual data harvesting. And what's worrying is that if you have this data now, right, and a bunch of, you know, you go, oh, well, what are they going to do? A bunch of 18 to 25-year-olds are playing Genshin Impact or maybe 18 to 40-year-olds. But the problem is 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, you are able to extract leverage uh, and potential blackmail from the players when in 10, 15, 20 years, they are uh, people who have access to information or policy decisions that the Chinese government may find, um, may want a certain decision to be made. Now, I know you guys are thinking, Paul, you really tend to assume everything coming from China is affiliated or associated with the Chinese Communist Party. And what I will tell you is that is because that seems to be how the Chinese Communist Party operates. Uh, every single film released in China is 
screened by Chinese sensors, right, in order to ensure that it meets the CCP's guidelines for certain cultural norms, i.e. they don't really want to represent, um, well, they don't, they don't want black people. Uh, that, that's that been clear. Uh, they don't want Chinese a Chinese person to, at any point, for any reason, be depicted as weak or the victim of anything at all. Uh, you may notice that in some films now that there's very few Asian or ethnically Chinese uh, characters, even, for example, a random uh, henchman, right? It, you know, you have the racially diverse uh, henchmen in a Bond movie. If one of them's Asian and gets beat up, uh, Chinese censors won't, won't allow that. And the other thing is that it works the opposite way, too. They are very deliberate about what sort of games are allowed to be exported, especially if those games are popular within China. Um, obviously, if there is some sort of anti-establishment game or a game with an anti-establishment message or one that doesn't align with Communist Party values, if it reaches a certain level of popularity, the CCP reserves the right to come in and squish it. The other reason I talk so much about these sort of CCP and government vulnerabilities is because uh, uh, China doesn't have the same protections for private property as we do in the United States. So, for example, if the government was to come to me and say, hey, Paul, we want you to actually um, uh, post a bunch of radical things on your discord and see if anyone in there is uh, if, is engaging is open to engaging in violence for example against the against the US government or has pro uh you know pro chinese or pro russian beliefs right if i was to i would tell them to pound sand and then i would call a lawyer they would have to go to court a judge would decide if in fact the government could coerce me to uh, engage in this sort of uh, law enforcement operation the answer is almost certainly no it almost always has to be done uh, with the consent right of being a, a what's called a ci sometimes a confidential informant the uh, ccp doesn't have these regulations uh all People, products, governments, states, students um, are obligated to cooperate with uh, Chinese state security apparatus uh, at the apparatus's request. It is illegal to say no. Um, obviously, you're thinking, wow, this is rife for abuse. This means that any Chinese person um, that I interact with could potentially be uh, compromised by state security services either now or in the future. Uh, and th you'd be correct. Uh, I've definitely had uh, friends of mine, students, uh, felt like fellow students um, who came over from China, perfectly nice, good friends. And you could tell when I would get on the topic of my military service that they would ask sort of off the wall questions. I had one person literally ask, what do you think is the U.S. military's greatest weakness? And I was like, ah, he's a good one. He's great. And we had to play it off like a joke. It wasn't a joke. Uh, I think they actually have an obligation to attempt uh, to find that stuff out. And I think we knew that they wanted to be able to tell, you know, if, if anyone asked them, like, oh, did you meet a soldier? They'll say, yes, I tried to ask them about military weaknesses. I couldn't get anything. And they go, OK, thanks for trying, buddy. But the point of all this is that this is a government that plays by just a different set of rules than what we are used to in the Western world. And so it's important to understand the media and corporate products that come out of there cannot help but be tinged by that government's beliefs. It's your loss. And yes, it does turn off when the game isn't running. So this review is going to include a guide on how to have fun because like real life, lusting after women causes suicidal depression. Step one, play as optimally as you want. Do not try to min-max shit because RNG Jesus will snap your fucking neck. Do whatever is fun with whatever you have. In my case, I decided that I would roleplay as a violent misandrist and only play as women out of principle. Any men that I rolled would be locked at level one and made useful in the cold minds. It is simply, <laughs> simply not worth it for me to engage in combat if I cannot also yank it. The central point of the characters is that they are potential wives and I am absolutely, definitely 1000% secure in my masculinity. Playing the game optimally in this case would mean making the game boring and staring at man ass, so fuck it. If, for instance, I had wanted a particular legally questionable female to be my digital puppet, the chance of me receiving that would be 0.3%, which is where this image comes from. Take what you can get with the rolls. Don't be mad. Exercise patience and control and you will have a lot more fun. I definitely have not sold my house to get big titty pirate mommy, but Maxor, I hear your thoughts. Why are you displaying a single image of a regular crab on my screen? And also, what is the world of, of a regular crab? 
Guys, there's a wide variety of crabs. Uh, if you've ever gone crabbing, it's actually a hoot. Uh, crabs are not the most brilliant creatures. You can stand on a dock in certain, uh, like, brackish areas, uh, like, like for me, it was near the Chesapeake. Stand on a dock, you can tie an entire chicken leg to a piece of string, and you just throw it into the water. And these crabs are so hungry, they reach up and they grab the chicken with one claw, and they eat with the other one. Even though the chicken starts to rise out of the water, they don't find this to be alarming. They continue to eat, and eventually you can pick the crab out of the water, and only when it leaves the water does it think to itself, this may be problematic. But by then, you have your net, and you scoop it up, and the crab is yours. Yes, they are not brilliant, and maybe this is Maxor trying to tell us that he is like the crab, and the chicken is like a cute anime girl in a video game. Yes, sure, every update has been harvesting more and more of his data. The uploads seem to contain a lot more files than is necessary, but he just continues to consume watching anime girls in dresses, and then one day the Chinese government comes to him and goes, your channel is now going to be CCP propaganda. Tell them about the, 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 the annexation of Formosa. Of Genshin Impact, and why are we here? That is a uh, that last part was probably a joke. Great quest, probably. Jin James, I hope. Games, because before we get into the exploration and the combat, we must first understand the context with which I run my beauty pageant. And like every game made by Asian people on my channel, the lore is some hyperborean bullshit. So let's say rule number two of enjoying the game is not caring about this, just like 90% of the player base. The world of Teyvat is ruled collectively by seven gods who govern the seven elements. Except the nature god, he's special. This came about because 2,800 years ago, there were like 80 gods or something. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. No, but actually seven seals opened up in heaven, so literally every god fought over their power to the death. The result was the seven gods of each element we see today, each ruling over their own nation in their own fucked up ways. Every once in a while, these delusional bastards will just give random people superpowers, like how the electricity God just gave a girl with a mental disorder a talking bird. This also includes small children who could very possibly kill themselves for some reason. Now, the yep, this sounds. This is one of the things that always sort of bothers me about uh, X Men or other franchises where people are born with superpowers, is that imagine the edgiest teen with godlike powers. It's terrifying. Re edgy teens with with regular with regular power is sort of terrifying. So the idea that edgy teens could, you know, light things on fire at will or mind wipe their teachers is should terrify you, fill you with fear, right? So obviously you can imagine even the most uh, innocent uh, wayfish uh, girls. Man, if you okay, if you've interacted with any human being at, at all in your life, just imagine them at the the most annoying, the worst they've ever been. And now imagine they would have godlike powers. It's it terrifies me and should terrify you. And yes, I understand Genshin Impact. They don't have to do this, right? The game won't let them kill the their friendly NPCs. In the real world, there are no such constraints. The world you see in game takes place in two nations or three if you're from the future. The first is Mondstadt, a lawless anarcho-capitalist commune in New Hampshire which has no formal governance of any kind. They instead rely institutionally on vigilante justice, including a hot Batman. As a result, an entire territory of their nation is completely overrun with wolves. No one has the systemic authority to stop people from exercising their rights and liberties to feed the wolves babies. Oh, also, there's the fucking dragon problem. Did I not mention the murderous dragon? Next, we have the... Okay, yeah, the, he's actually capturing a real problem with super libertarianism, is that everyone loves freedom, surely, and no one likes taxes, but there's... When you have human beings in certain numbers, or rather at certain densities, you're just stuck with the fact that you need some governance, Right? You know, if you live, if you're the only person for 25 square miles, guess who's going to stop you from burning your trash? Nobody. Nobody, right? But, and, and the truth is, if you are the only person, you know, for 25 square miles, and that's like the density of people, if you burn your trash and your neighbor burns their trash and your neighbor's neighbor burns their trash, 
you're not going to impact anything. You're just not. There's just not enough density. But the problems start to scale very, very, very quickly. And that is when you have a greater density of people, you need to have more and more rules about how people need to function to get along with each other. Again, you right when you are a one stoplight town, you don't need a crosswalk because you can do this and then walk across the road. But let's say you live in a major urban area. Well, if you try to wait for a break in cars, it will take you like 12 hours to get across the street. So you have to have some sort of system that allow people to cross sometimes and cars to stop other times, right? Similarly with trash. If you had every single person in Manhattan burning their trash, Manhattan would be a, it would be like Mad Max levels of dystopia. Okay, so instead we've all agreed that everybody pitches in and we have trash trucks run around and pick up the trash. And then we take it somewhere where it can be mm, sort of safely disposed of, where, you know, it won't be breathed in by children. The point is, is that this is how every society works, right? You look at the Middle Ages. Once people reached a certain density in cities because they had no waste management, and waste management is the easiest example because it's so proximate to our lives but this is true of security and enforcing laws and managing traffic and managing uh food and managing water and managing everything every single thing that a person could want to do you have to create rules to manage it when you have certain scales of people when you have a country with 350 million people in it you have to come up with rules and on how they can interact and behave with each other, right? You just can't. And you realize that the only way to solve these sort of large scale collective problems is with large scale collective governance, right? And you just can't build consensus about how to solve the wolf problem. You just need some people who are in charge who can come up with a plan doesn't need to be the optimized plan, right? But it just needs to work to solve the problem of the wolves. And that's why we have governance. Because so someone can come in and say, I understand you don't like seeing wolf babies uh, getting hurt, but we're the government and the wolves are eating people. So we are going to hire people to hunt down and kill the wolves. And they're going to do it on your property and you need to get over it, right? Can you, I mean, as, you, as we've seen in the past two years, people resist all sorts of common sense policies for absolutely no reason other than that they're kind of stubborn assholes. And we should be grateful that we live in a world in which that aren't libertarian utopias because we can at least say, hey, we don't care how you feel about something. You don't get a vote in this. You voted for the people in charge. And if you don't like them, you can wait a couple years and vote them back out. Nation of Liyue, an extremely rich and powerful country to the east. They have recently come into conflict with Mondstadt due to the Luhua Pool massacre of 69 years, as well as an aggressive foreign policy involving a nine-dashed line in the Sea of Clouds. Headed by the Tian Xuan Ningguang of the Liyue Qi Xing, those are all real names, Liyue exhibits an unprecedented level of prosperity and control, living happily under the watchful eye of the rock god, who periodically disguises himself to ensure that the populace is behaving well and upholding their state contracts just in case now china i know you're new to making video games yet in my country we have a long history of shooting people but who lives in liyue and who lives in where is it the answer is unfortunate populating this extensive world will be several factions of enemies with subgroups elemental specializations and fucking bullshit the enemy variety of this game paints a picture of a post-apocalyptic nightmare world where raving bands of savages constantly destroy everything locking humanity in a perpetual state of warfare with armies of bandits and the midget people one of these groups is the hillichers yeah this is uh oh obviously he seems to have made the comparison that i would have made that this is some sort of weird analog uh obviously it's depicting uh not obviously it's perhaps depicting the united states and its libertarian individualistic philosophy as one creating chaos and a frightening level of insecurity um 
while also hindering the ability to engage in the sort of collective action that is necessary to govern, uh, while China is depicted as an orderly, organized, and benevolent uh, Overwatch society, right? In American games, you would see this depicted instead as like a dystopia with Big Brother watching you and security services uh, checking you for dissent at all turns, a sort of um, like Watchdogs Legion type scenario. Intelligent race capable of empathy and complex thoughts, which is why they must be destroyed. These guys make the Gombe chimpanzee war look like a fucking joke. And at no point does anyone in the entire game even give a shred of sympathy for the Hilla Turtles, except for Elon Musk. They can be big gorilla, small monkey, operate complex machinery, and have their own language. This makes it more fun to slaughter entire villages of them and steal their possessions with no consequences. In fact, you're encouraged to do it. Overall, I would rate- Huh, interesting. If someone's different than you, that is permission to slaughter them because homogeny is really important. Hmm. Huh. Could this align with CCP messaging uh, regarding other, for example, ethnic minorities who are very different? In fact, I think these monkeys even have beards. Them a genocide let's... out of ten. Next are the. Oh uh, no no no! Let's back it up, 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 back it up. I want to see if these guys have beards, just like the only ethnic minority in China that has beards. Yeah, they kind of do. I'm gonna call that a beard. Yeah, yeah. You're encouraged to do it. Overall, I would rate them a- There's only one ethnic minority in China that has beards, and it is their Muslim ethnic minority, the Uyghurs. Genocide- That has beards as a cultural norm. I know people in China can- out of 10. Next are the country-sized hordes of organized bandits called the Treasure Hoarders, who are just regular guys forced to fight you with shovels and Molotov cocktails. Are you sure we're the good guys? It's fortunate that, because they committed a crime, their lives are now forfeit. Abyss mages are very simple because they are one enemy with two reskins, who are also inhuman beings of the Dark Void who have sworn vengeance upon humanity itself. They also dwell almost entirely in fucking space. The... Fatui of Snezhnaya are heavily armed diplomats seeking to dominate the world of Tevat through subterfuge, and employing nine foot tall people with hammers is absolutely conducive to this goal, I promise. They are unique among Tevat because they serve the interests of the Zaritza of Snezhnaya, also known as the God of Ice. That's important because it's very weird that they primarily use electricity and fire. I guess the Ice God is just fucking lazy. The Fatui are always up to no good, like stealing the Wind God's power or like a bank heist. They're also really hot, so I'm not stopping them. Finally, we have the local wildlife of Tevat, which is 90% slimes and 10% these fuckers. I spent most of the fight waiting to do something. Computer deactivate iguana. Ah! That's really what the combat is all about. Sometimes it's like, holy fuck, that is a whale. And other times it's like, I think that bush just fucking really, no matter what happens. Yep, uh, this is sort of like real combat where it's 99.99% very, 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 very slow and boring uh, and nothing is happening. And then 1% of the time you're like, holy, holy crap. You're in for an experience. Let's find out if that's bad or worse. Shit Getting Intact is a game about flow, where to maximize their power, the player dynamically switches between their DPS character and everyone else. Rule number three of Genshin Impact, pick one. Your typical team is comprised of your DPS baby, your heal support, your burst support, and moral support. Think of it like a train. You only need one engine and enough weight to kill Terry Davis. Now, like everything- Jesus damn, dude. Fuck. Characters have elemental alignments, which depend- so, yeah, what I'll also say is this is also accurate to real combat, right? It, you need to have, obviously, a powerful combat element, but you have to make sure it's adequately supported all the way back through the logistical chain. In World War II, for every one soldier that was pulling the trigger uh, or putting rounds downrange, there were 12 soldiers or military members engaged in support operations. And that was pretty typical. Now in the post-industrial era, thanks to the use of contractors and automation, the ratio is a little bit improved, but it, I think it's honestly a deception because Obviously, some of the things that were done by military members, for example, fixing the plumbing on a military base or a forward uh, forward operating base, is now done by contractors who aren't technically 
military, therefore giving you sort of a technicality type out. Depending on the enemy can ruin yeah. the game. My wife Barbara could heal me, but in the process must make everyone wet, which makes us a proverbial <laughs> bathtub, which enemies will then catapult toasters into for massive damage. It's a fucking blast. You feel like a chemistry professor gone rogue, using the elements to his advantage and then blowing himself up in the process. Unless your DPS uses rocks, in which case, you know, uh, just just watch, I guess. Everything is elements, and everyone has an elemental skill and alignment. Unless you're the nature god who has no characters. Some are bad, and others are very bad. But many are completely game-changing, like how Beto's elemental skill adds a parry mechanic to the game, or how Ningguang invalidates all ranged enemies. The combat is definitely its strength, and is an experiment in how bad you can craft your psychotic dog water alchemy, and hopefully create a moving ball of destruction strong enough to kill God. Yeah, this is sort of weird that you have characters where if you randomly roll a good one, the game becomes potentially much easier than if you roll a bad one. Again, sort of like real life, you get dealt a hand when you're born, and some people have a lot of advantages that other ones don't. And even if the game's never easy, uh, sometimes it is borderline impossible with the bad characters, if this is real life. This is like real life. Sometimes it's borderline impossible with a really bad roll, and it can be very, very, very much more accessible with a good role. To extend this concept, every character uses one of five unique weapon classes, such as Mongolian, Controller Erosion, The Waiting Game, Egg Catapults, and The Speed Demon. So be careful with who you choose and what weapons that, oh wait, no, it's random, get fun. Now, this would all be excellent gameplay if it didn't sometimes amount to throwing two sponges at each other. Enemies scale to your level, and generally health is not hard to come by. So depending on your investment, some enemies could take minutes to kill. This all amounts to making a classic video game build, the tank, entirely useless. Mm. Most strategy can dream up are viable, but generally I want to create an entertaining video while providing some real critique. This is everything in this game that can work fairly well for the general gameplay. Some like characters are bad when they really just aren't as generally applicable. You don't need a tank because you will be switching to your DPS anyways, who is a tank against your will. Health is literally always a shackle and a curse. That is, of course, unless you're playing Barbara, whose healing scales only off of health, making her tankier than Tiet. Let's go over an example. Mm, 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 mm. Good one. Party to give you some idea of the insanity that we're working with. It is optimal in most of my combat scenarios to cause forest fires by throwing a spicy bear. Why? Well, it's obvious. My DPS Beto can parry anything which includes the heat of fire or how about ningguang who spawns a wall inside of enemies like scary's mod we just do it to piss them off did i also mention you can invite your insane discord stalker to play co-op with you the combat is fully uh that's a bad idea friend you don't want to give attention or validation to trolls nor do you want to give it to people who have unhealthy fixations functional nor do you want to give it to people who try to recruit you into scams. I'm learning all of these things about being a creator now that I'm full time. I don't want to be a part of your scammy cryptocurrency NFTs. Got those offers and hope they can go pound sand. I'm here to tell you, I will never, in this famous last words, I will never offer an NFT. Never, I will never offer a standalone NFT. If I do, you can be rest assured that I'm going to rug pull you. I should even call it like maybe I should and just be like ruggies and just be like, I'm going to rug pull you from this NFT collection and, and promise like preposterous benefits. Be like, I will transport you into the world of Genshin Impact where you can meet your waifu IRL, right? And just see how many idiots would buy this. Hello, Max. I made a mistake. And this isn't even going into the complicated system by which you customize artifacts, upgrade your weapon, and level your character's talents because that's boring. It can be made especially boring when you have to pick 30 mushrooms to do it, but you know, here we are. That leads me to my next point. You're gonna have to explore for those mushrooms. And that sounds bad, but it's actually the best part. I mean, you know, I'm just gonna point this out. One of the things that they talk about in uh, China's emerging sort of modern techno industrial culture uh, is that the leftover women, right? This is a Chinese translation of a phenomenon for women who are over, I don't know, it's like 27 or something, uh, who, who are unmarried, right? It's it, it, okay. So, one of the things that happens when you have cultures and economies change really rapidly is that cultures are always like a generation behind, right? So, and you have China, which has undergone an unbelievable 
move in the span of one generation in about 30 years it's gone from mostly an agrarian economy to mostly a uh, post-industrial information economy and what makes that really complicated is that the cultural programming and this isn't specific to china and the u.s has the exact same problem is that the cultural norms still reflect an antiquated society is still reflected generation ago well a generation ago right it was it was you know in rural villages where marriage was not just a important cultural institution but an essential survival skill a lone woman or a lone man would not be able to perform do the agricultural and domestic responsibilities uh, essential for survival you literally couldn't work in the field all day and then also prepare meals and cook them and this is true in every rural society right you have to have some form of division of labor because you won't be able to perform the minimum to survive so institutions like marrying and marrying young, having children, right? Lots of children represent lots of both insurance in that, uh, you know, you want to have at least a couple that will be productive and be able to care for you in old age, but also from a, you know, within probably about three to five years, those children are ready to begin to contribute to the household and learn the tasks essential to running and surviving in the world so these cultural norms are like marry young have many children support each other no matter what or else you will starve to death right and then when you move to an information economy it's more about gaining skills gaining knowledge being able to uh garner and have value in the economy usually through ultra specialization again Every single person is a farmer uh, in rural societies, uh, but in modern societies, even a lawyer isn't a lawyer, even a doctor isn't a doctor, right? You're a, you know, cardiac surgeon who focuses on valve replacement. You're a, a lawyer with specialty in IT patent law, right? And that's how you survive in these modern economies. So you have to reconcile the fact that you have these two different cultures sort of running up against each other. And I think that's why Genshin Impact has this obsession with tiny wayfish, almost childlike uh, 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 female characters because there's some sort of thing where the optimal woman to marry is the person you would want to marry, uh, you know, in at, at like the, who's optimal to marry if you are a rural uh, villager, right? You want to marry someone who is young, who is healthy, who, um, you know, and you want to marry as soon as you're going to have to survive on your own, right? That means that none of these women look like they are even past 25 right so this idea of 27 year old uh women uh still being attractive right is i don't know it just doesn't seem to compute it's a real fixation on youth again something that america wrestled with uh you know 20 30 years ago this norm of of you know you're washed up as an actress if you're over 25 or you know no one wants a model who looks like she's actually in her 30s etc etc and we've sort of changed and updated our norms. But again, I think China, it's just been such a fast level of growth. They haven't. Get ready for some cross-country gaming because we literally have a lot of ground to cover. So rule number four of Genshin Impact is that if you see something, just go. You've probably noticed at some point that this game looks identical to Breath of the Wild, right down to the UI. This is an objectively correct assessment. It's just that the game doesn't give a shit, and neither should we. Breath of the Wild was so good that I wanted Breath of the Wild with more anime pussy. Because goddammit, why did Nintendo make Zelda look like that? The amount of bandits and foreign soldiers in this game suddenly makes sense when you realize it has the geography of fucking Afghanistan. It's quite the vertical place, but you're given the tools to navigate it, like your feet or your sweat. And there is quite a bit to see. So, for an example, when I first installed the game, I didn't know that Leeway was in it. That's over half of the map. I was doing a quest that required a wild radish, so I naturally went hiking to find it and accidentally discovered the entirety of Ming Dynasty China, at which point I was wrongfully assaulted after being mistaken for opium. This is one of those games where you start finding chests in the wild and within 30 minutes are flying to a strange island with a man named Jeffrey. It's actually... Uh, <laughs> now he's dead. 
actually not that different to Skyrim, but this game makes Skyrim look like it's in Kansas. There is always something to do and always something to find. You would think that it would get stale, but they just keep finding ways to turn on my neurons. There is a puzzle. I just wanted the chest. Which spans an entire region of the game where you have to climb three mountains. You can spend an afternoon doing that and it's viable. There is no direction that you can go that will not help you in some tangible way. And that's... His, his weird visual sides of China are bizarre. It's what's important about exploration. It's not just pretty, it's optimal. You see the shit right here. This activates my fucking almonds. Exploring this game trains your neurons to fire at the most basic of incentives, like a lab chimp. But seriously, if you aren't yet considering- Uh, okay, I want you guys to remember, actually, if there's one thing I could tell people about video games, and social media especially, is that you are the chimp. Right? They are trying to produce this behavior. And the more you produce a behavior in response to a stimulus, the stronger the association gets. Right? So if you do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again to hundreds of iterations, you will instill that programming really deep inside that brain. Inside whether it's a primate. I, I did, we accidentally did it to our chickens right we we they wake us up in the morning at 7 a.m and they know that the more noise they make the sooner we come out and let them out and they can get food and so to our immense consternation it's just made them louder right and we don't really have a choice because we can't lock them up until they stop but we it's for the programming is so deep now we can't stop it we can't stop them from being loud and annoying in the mornings we have a plan, but it involves literally burning their coop down and building a brand new one. That's not the point. The point is, is that social media, video games, these games are designed to train your brain in the exact same way. So when you interact with an app, you should ask yourself, what is the app trying to incentivize me to do? What is the programming that this app is doing to me, right? And why? Why does it want me? And why does it continually pull my engagement into it? Bring the game. Just have fun exploring it. Stop and smell the flowers and accidentally find China over a vegetable. I found it eventually. It it took three hours. Now, if the review had ended here, this would be a definite recommend because the game is free. It costs zero dollars. It cannot yank your bank. Not that I would know. But I must warn you that there are some serious drawbacks besides the fucking Chinese surveillance state that you have to install. So it's time to give you the final tools and rules that you need to enjoy. What is, if the game is free, you are the product. This game. Regula Numeris Quinque of Genshin Impact is just, please God, use the resin every day. Okay. So to explain that, you have to understand that this game works by mostly giving you what you want when you seek it out. Unless it's crit damage. So you don't end up mindlessly slogging for 10 hours a day for a single goddamn Warframe chassis. But there is a catch. When it comes to grinding, there is a clever way to make sure that you can't trivialize the entire game. Which is that the game just stops you. You expend resin when you kill a boss. Want money. Want XP. Want artifacts. Want to live. Want to see my daughter again. Pretty much anything. And if you have no resin, well, <laughs> better wait. God will collect his existence tax and you will fucking pay. Even if you live in Mondstadt, the IRS is an eternal fixture of the universe. And although it's nice to have fair guarantees for artifacts, it has the unique side effect of stopping the game from being played. You get 160 a day, and for reference, you spend 40 for boss loot, so good luck. And if you thought that was bad- Yeah, this actually sort of makes sense. That's really fascinating. The idea that they've programmed in a uh, auto stop a uh, hard stop against it. Uh, that actually is a brilliant move. As you guys know, the CCP recently uh, re released a, uh, I believe it's a law or policy or regulation. I'm not really familiar with the strength of, of enforcement, but it says that children cannot spend more than, I think it's like two hours a day playing video games like on school nights it's a extremely invasive level of parenting regulation that we probably wouldn't tolerate here in the u.s but again different place however uh it's fascinating to see games build it right in to avoid obsessive playing but it's also good because it ensures a level playing field nothing is sh more irritating and sucks worse than having to play a game where you're a casual and you're going up against an army of sweaties right people who are just level 450 
who either just flex on you, make you feel like there's no reason for you to even try, or who have so many hours in game that no person who leads a regular life has a chance to play. So this idea of saying, hey, we are going to make sure that there is a level playing field that puts a ceiling on the rate of growth for players, I think is actually pretty awesome. Bad. Get ready for rule six, which is, yeah, you, you gotta do the daily quests. We Genshin players are always hard at work on the daily dopamine farms, putting in that grind so that we can have a four-star object every 20 days. It really makes a man wonder why we bothered with making murder illegal in the first place. Thank you, Kane. This game can give you a lot if you decide to commit yourself to it, but if you don't, you will be scraping for crack crystals in a back alley. Maybe make a YouTube video. That alone is probably enough to discourage most people. I thought I was going to be one of those people until I realized that I like the game. Stockholm Syndrome is actually cool. And for our cool. final rule, you don't want to play with English voices. Set it to literally any other language except English. Now, the voice work isn't horrendous, but uh, it doesn't sound like the dialogue was actually written for English, and the translation is fucking hilarious. The wolves frighten him so badly that he's paralyzed with fear. We've looked everywhere and haven't seen any of the wolves. So do what I do and play in Japanese, then switch the game to Chinese whenever you're in Liyue for maximal immersion. Dear Mr. Shi, please send missiles to liberate my country from the yoke of capitalism. Now that you're armed. <laughs> oh God, uh, the the John Sh John Cena. Let's call him John Sheena. Uh, John Cena apology to China is my all-time favorite, and it's still the thing that bothers me the most about corporations, the fact that it, any corporate interest wants money. And literally in the U.S., they are like, we love, like, like they'll, they will lean as hard as they want on the diversity bandwagon, right? We love it, rainbow flag Coke. But in China, I dare you to see find that movie poster with a black person on it right uh, you you won't right they definitely are and it, god help you the chinese language uh coca-cola account is never going to sit there and talk about uh the right of gay people to exist because china doesn't want it and corporations don't have moral values it's it, it actually it'd be illegal for them to take moral stances right instead they have a duty to their shareholders a legal duty to maximize their profit deliver the maximum value to shareholders that is bit modern business philosophy and there's actually some level of legal precedence that you have to at least be making a basically decent business decision so literally having no moral character having total sociology Apathy, right and changing your official stances on things um is a just business as usual but what you need should you play the game only if you have self-control it's not worth it to spend money on the game i'm serious and that's why you should give me your money so i can spend it responsibly remember the game is free and so is the porn i would like to thank the kind chinese billionaires and international arms dealers of the maxor patreon for funding my hopeless and deadly addictions if you well, there you go, man. You can't argue with that. Funding uh, Maxor's uh, fixation on what are not anime girls, but Chinese anime girl knockoffs. Uh, though I guess people love Genshin Impact, so are, are they really knockoffs or are they the real anime girls? I don't know. What you guys should do is follow me on Patreon. Uh, let's see. Thanks to my, uh, Lieutenant Tier Patreons, Cole Foster, Caffeinated, Chris, Command Unit, Jakob Flavius, Dr. Shadow Cop, Portal World, and Time Itself, The Herb. Not the concept. All right, guys. And I hope you'll join me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash combat Paul. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.